Good morning, Bucknoters. Welcome to the Bucknuts Morning 5 here on Wednesday, September 9th, 2020. I am Dave Biddle. I am joined by Matt Baxendale. Bax, just when I was getting my hopes up, hope is now fading away. It does not look like the Big Ten is going to have a football season that starts in October. It's ridiculous. We'll unpack all the reasons why, but just uh, your reaction with the recent news, the stuff that came out yesterday with Dan Patrick and everything, saying the Big Ten just doesn't have enough votes. Um, maybe you have more hope than I do, but I, I've pretty much lost hope at this point. Yeah, I'm uh, annoyed as all heck at this point as to what's going on with the sheer stupidity that's surrounding the Big Ten right now. Uh, I was really optimistic, too, coming out of Labor Day, but it's like yesterday it was like a bucket of cold water on a growing fire. Uh, if the Big Ten does not play in October, which some people think is a possibility, some people think isn't, let's face it, with all the twists and turns that we've had here, uh, it's beyond – just beyond – implausible that we even have a clue at this point because we've heard six different things at six different times and that's in the last two days so if the Big Ten doesn't play here let me explain what the path is going to look like if, if there's not a decision to play in October one the lawsuits are going to explode Tom Mars is circling here like a buzzard ready to go after every single one of these schools uh, I mean he He's responding to people tweeting about this, like uh, left and right on Twitter. I mean, he was responding to stuff I had on Twitter yesterday. With here's, it's very clear he believes there was not a vote, not a formal vote, and that the Big Ten is redacting 11 out of 13 pages that they're trying to get rid of this judge in Nebraska. It's only going to get worse. Uh, you, you had Master Teague's dad yesterday on Twitter saying that with the NFL GMs saying that they they would absolutely pick a player who played this year over one who didn't. This loss of value lawsuit is going to move forward. This is going to turn into one of the ugliest off-field things in terms of, of, of legal battles we've ever seen in college sports if they choose not to play. Because right now, nobody knows for sure whether there was a vote. I personally am inclined to believe there was not one, and they're trying to retroactive it in, so saying you can't prove there wasn't one. Um, but if that's the case, then they didn't end up having a binding vote to cancel the season. And the numbers that everybody's hearing, you're hearing, everybody's hearing, is that seven teams now want to play, five don't, and two other ones are sort of on the fence and don't really want to be the ones who make the decision one way or another. So in theory, if they didn't have a legal vote, then they should have to have nine to cancel, not nine to play. But, you know, you have a signed affidavit from Northwestern's president and at that point in time, you know, that, that's going to be the default setting is my guess. So th there, this is going to get way uglier than it already is. And if I'm Ohio State, I'm in these meetings saying, screw you, I'm not playing your JV joke of a spring season again with the Pac-12 for a March Rose Bowl. I'm not doing that. I'm playing this fall for a national championship opportunity, or I'm not playing till next fall because this is absurd. And – you know, you never say never at this point because, you know, we could be sitting here all gloom and doom and then something's going to come out at 10 a.m. and the whole thing's going to flip over on its head. The reality is the OSU family, uh, and I'm talking about the, the parents of the players, the coaches, everybody thought there had been a decision officially made on this already by Saturday. And here we are sitting on what is today, Wednesday of the week after, and they still haven't made their minds up. It's mind-boggling, Dave. No question about it. And I want to get into exactly who is voting for what. Everybody's being secretive about it. Um, we, I mean, not everybody. Ohio State saying they want to play. Iowa, Nebraska, uh, the three amigos there that have been outspoken that they want to play. But you look at Dan Patrick's report yesterday. He mentioned six schools that do not want to play. No surprise here, but both Michigan schools, both Illinois schools, Northwestern and Illinois, Maryland and Rutgers are the six for sure that don't want to play, according to Dan Patrick. That jibes with what I'm hearing. We know Ohio State, Iowa, Nebraska want to play. There's reports that Minnesota wants to play. That's four that want to play. Penn State, where are we at with Penn State? I'm thinking Penn State's in. Or do you think they're one of, the, one of the ones on the fence? I think Penn State's in. Okay, that's what I think too. I have them in. That's five. Okay, Wisconsin. In. That's six. Then both Indiana schools. We have six out, six in so far. Both Indiana schools are on the fence. Is that your, your take here? Purdue's 
school president um, is the former, what, Republican governor of the state. Is that right? Yeah. So Purdue's confused me because Mitch Daniels is his name. And there was an article where he said he went along with the consensus. But Purdue was the first school in the Big Ten to announce in-student return a month ago, months and months ago. So um, I, I, I'm utterly shocked Purdue isn't a let's play football school. Um, but it seems like people online are saying that Indiana is for sure in and Purdue isn't. So to me, it makes more sense that Purdue would be a yes on this one. So, and, and, and you know, you talked about the six that are out. Uh, there's rumors that Rutgers is, is waffling on it, but we don't really know. Um, I, I would have to think if it came down to it, Purdue would vote yes, and I think Indiana would vote yes too. The whole thing is just – it's just maddening. Um, I almost said interesting. It's not interesting. It's just ridiculous. Uh, it's depressing. It's just maddening. It's stupid. Yeah, and, you know, it, it keeps getting – there's so many twists and turns. So yesterday, Mike DeWine, governor of Ohio, speaking of governors, a lot of, lot of shout-outs to Midwest governors on today's show, past and present. Uh, Mike DeWine spoke with Gene Smith yesterday. And now some people – there's been debate about this. The question that Mike DeWine was asked at his press conference yesterday was – do you think the big it was like a two it was a two pronged question? Uh, do you think the Big Ten did the right thing, and is there a chance that there could be a season that starts in October? That was the question, and he answered the first question first. He said, "I'm not sure if they did the right thing." He said, "But I talked to Gene Smith, and I absolutely think it's still in play." And he just left it at that. Now, if you interpret that that he answered the question, he's saying October's still in play. Some people said, "Oh, he probably just meant sometime this fall, maybe November," which again is ridiculous to me. If you can play in November, you obviously can play in October. Um, what did you make of DeWine's comments yesterday? If anything came out of yesterday that was encouraging, it was that. But I don't know how encouraged we should be by that. What would you make of it, Bax? Well, DeWine, DeWine would know to a certain extent, I assume. I assume Gene Smith would tell him this. And let's face it, DeWine is – DeWine, for whatever you want to say about Mike DeWine throughout this whole process, he's not standing in the way of football in the state of Ohio. So he's not one of the bad guys for this particular issue. He's a proponent, if anything. For football. Yeah. I mean, he, he's – every single school in Ohio, except for Ohio State and the MAC schools, are playing. I mean, UC is playing. UC kicks off in like a week and a half or something at this point. Um, uh, DeWine's not the issue here. And DeWine was one of what I consider two pieces of good news because Colin, Colin Coward was saying he had multiple sources saying the Big Ten was still anticipating an October kick. So those were the two pieces of good news if you want to look at the glass partly full – uh, argument, uh, but yesterday, you know, the the attitude yesterday was significantly different from a lot of the people who you think would be close to the situation that I've been talking to um, throughout this whole process. And DeWine's attitude was a nice turn of events, but when was the last time he talked to Gene Smith? You know, I talked to Gene Smith and he thinks it's still a thing. Well, if that was on Friday or Saturday, then, you know, obviously the situation may have changed. And right now, it feels like the people who don't want to play are trying to run the clock out here, right? Because, you know, Jim Harbaugh is sitting here on last Saturday saying he could play in two weeks and Ohio state's still practicing, right? Uh, you know, I don't want to get Charlie Brown football here again, but the end of the day, I just don't understand this Dave. Like long, you can look at it whatever way you want at this point, you know, if people are trying to tell me November works, there's zero reason October doesn't work, especially with the federal government offering the five-minute tests that are going to be all over the place in, in a month, right, to the Big Ten, guaranteeing it to them. I mean, most of these programs are doing testing with minimal positive results in the Big Ten. I mean, Michigan hasn't had a positive in months, and – there's no reason you can't do October instead of November. You open yourself up to a lot of charges of things that we don't want to talk about, like politics. If you have a season that starts to start on Thanksgiving, so you have this idiotic, you know, co-JV schedule with, with the, with the PAC 12, while we're supposed to be playing in the middle of 20 degree weather in places like Minnesota. I think it's beyond idiotic. I don't understand this. And the biggest kicker here is what gives these schools who don't want to play the right to tell Ohio State not to play, right? Like, if you don't want to play, fine. Now get the hell out of our way. Can you imagine being these Ohio State players right now? I mean, football practice is hard. And now they're, you know, now it's 
mandatory again they still aren't practicing with pads on but you know you've got to think um, if they're practicing eventually they'll put pads on if they actually think that they're preparing for a November season football practice is that is rough stuff and it's one thing when you have that care at the end of the at the end of the stick where you know there's a season for sure you know that there's going to be a chance to you know win the Big Ten again and beat that team up north and you know have all of your goals on the table I can't imagine these guys what they're going through right now mentally being jerked around like this and how are you going to get yourself motivated to go in there and have a football practice when you basically if you're a realist you're looking at all the facts out there and you're thinking we're not going to have a season at least not one that's going to be meaningful not one that's going to start in October not one that we could actually be eligible for the college football playoff I just can't imagine being these players right now and actually have to go through practice when you don't even know what you're practicing for agreed and let's face it Ohio State has the most to lose of every Big Ten school there is no other school that is losing more than Ohio State with this delay because Ohio State is an extraordinarily legitimate competitor to win the national championship this year. Uh, this this is going to be one of those like missed opportunities that you know we, we were all upset that 2012 couldn't play for the national championship. This is a bigger loss to me because we all know that 2012 team had some flaws and the loss from 2012 was acutely felt because they probably would have played Notre Dame as the two undefeateds. And we would have beat Notre Dame, but we all know Alabama was better than both teams probably this year. I don't feel that way whatsoever. So if you want to hear some positivity on today's morning, whatever minute cast that we're doing here, imagine how motivated these guys are going to be if October 10th somehow happens, right? These guys are grinding through months of, of workouts and practices and just trying to stay ready on hope. Imagine Ohio State now after thinking their season was taken away for a month, after coming off of a loss to Clemson that, God, I'm still sick about that BS, uh, where, you know, you can run six steps with the football and it's not a fumble, but don't get me started. Uh, imagine the motivation these guys are going to have, right? Imagine what, what's going to be waiting from Ohio State if these guys are somehow allowed to play with their full-strength team. God have mercy on the rest of the Big Ten, especially the schools that didn't want to play. And God have mercy on anybody who plays them in a playoff game. Like, it almost would be worth going through all this heartache and heart attack and just depression about taking away something that defines the fall for so many people if you knew that Ohio State was going to get their shot. Because after this roller coaster, you have to think that they are ready to just destroy everybody that they play you will never have a more motivated ohio state team especially with a shorter schedule than this year's buckeye team if they're given the opportunity so you know if you want to be optimistic that that's my optimism right now is, is that if somehow we get over that hurdle from six or seven yes votes to get to nine yes votes then this ohio state team is going to be something to behold Great stuff from Matt Baxendale. Thank you to all listeners out there for tuning in. Have a great day, Bucknutters. Nutters.